dear student hope you will safe and sound is for me concern my name is nisar zamin shah lecture department of pharmacy sarad university of science and information technology today we will discuss about the topic epi program related to the subject community pharmacy is for epi program concern so epi stand for expanded program on immunization initially this program was launched in 1974 anyhow in our country pakistan this program was established or launched in 1978 simply we can say that this program was launched in the late 19th century the main objective of this program was to protect the newborn babies the young the children uh, from various virulent lethal communicable diseases where vaccination is important because in the early 19th century and late 18th century there were various disease condition disease or simply we can say we are the immunization was important so those disease were responsible for the death or disability of a lot of the newborn babies and children especially worldwide that's why when this program was established in 1974 the aim was just to decrease or to reduce morbidity and mortality rate throughout the world uh, especially in case of children because a lot of deaths and disability were reported due to various disease conditions this program which was established by who this program was not only for a specific region of the world or for a specific country or we can say for a specific locality this program was for the entire community this program was for the entire universe the main objective was to eradicate various disease condition various pathogenic substances various lethal diseases especially from the entire universe because mostly these are communicable in nature so in the early time when this program was established so there were various children diseases and still some are to be nowadays included with the passage of time depend upon the condition severity and nature of the disease condition so those diseases were like the first one on priority basis and still mostly the children are to be vaccinated so that is the tuberculosis or tb the first two, the next one that is the diphtheria the next one pertussis neonatal tetanus poliomyelitis hepatitis and measles 
so hepatitis in measles and especially as for the poliomyelitis is concerned so poliomyelitis is basically responsible for the disability of a lot number of newborn babies and children in our society i think this disease have completely eradicated in the western society anyhow in under developing countries especially related to the asian society still some cases are reported with the passage of time any anyhow this disease should be eradicated the newborn babies the children should be vaccinated against the poliomyelitis in order we can eradicate this problem for, from our society uh, that's too much important for the asian society that proper vaccination regarding all these problem and especially the poliomyelitis yes we have to vaccinate the newborn babies and the children anyhow uh some strategies should be there and those basic strategies are like just to uh we should have to free the globe uh, or the country from the polio this is the for this is on priorities very important strategies so the first important strategy is of the epi program yes we should have to vaccinate in the entire society entire communities the newborn babies and the children and the next one yes we should have to free the globe from the polio cases in order to eradicate this problem from the entire universe the next strategy is too much important especially to eliminate the measles yes we should have to eliminate up to 2008 this this was the main strategies any of certain case still there and the next one the neonatal tetanus this this was also one of the strategy up to 2008 this was one of the important strategies any how some some diseases are there still some a new emerging new diseases are there just like at present time corona uh virus i uh, think which the pandemic disease which, which basically uh covered the entire globe and this i think in the coming time that should be part of the api program so that's why uh, the important strategies should be there uh so as for the basic concept and importance of the uh, vaccination is concerned so obviously it is clear to you you people that's basically immunization we uh basically vaccinate the individuals or specific vaccines to be administered to the individuals that may be the newborn babies youngs or any person regarding what's 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 the age of the person let's suppose anyhow if it is needed if a specific vaccine is needed so yes the person should be exposed to that vaccine so once we administer the respective vaccine so uh that basically modulate or uh, enhance the immune system of that person and as a result certain antibodies are produced so if the person body is exposed to the respective viruses whatsoever the nature of the pathogen in the coming time so obviously if our respective antibodies are present against that substances so obviously the person will be protected and this is very important the next important concept and importance of the vaccination basically to promote health uh, of the people and to prolong the life span of the people and the next one to protect the newborn babies and children uh, in the coming time from various diseases and the next one especially infant and the newborn babies 
need to be vaccinated uh, this is very important so this is the importance of the vaccination uh, program that we should have to vaccinate the individual where we think that is vaccination is important so we have to vaccinate the individual and obviously uh, if we vaccinate the individual against a specific disease or pathogen so antibodies productions will be there as a result the person will be protected this is the main importance obviously and i think in the coming time if we synthesize the coronavirus vaccine so there this will be a very uh, we will uh, free the globe from this pandemic problem especially and to promote health this is important yes if we free the individual from these problems so we we'll promote health and prolong life span and yes uh, the newborn babies yes they should be vaccinated because this is too much important because the newborn babies uh they are more susceptible to this problem so this is very uh important uh is for this uh, epi program is concerned so one thing is to be keep in mind that certain conditions are there where basically we have to avoid the immunization program or we have to stop this program or certain vaccine we have to uh, certain vaccine we have to stop so the first one that is the anaphylaxis uh, or the severe hypersensitivity so i think you familiar with this problem so if someone is someone show anaphylactic reaction or severe hypersensitivity reaction to certain uh, previous doses of the vaccine or in some cases severe anaphylactic reaction may be occur due to some antigenic substances may be due to some other substances so in case of anaphylactic reaction one thing keep in mind there there is basically <coughs> a severe uh, histamine secretion from the mouth cells this is because it is allergic response so if histamine secretion is there from the mouth cell so this histamine uh, basically cause the various changes cause various are responsible for the for various changes in our body system on priority basis one thing keep in mind that histamine have a dual action so histamine for temporary basis on temporary basis it is responsible just for the vaso constriction phenomena but this is very for a short period of time for a few seconds so anyhow histamine is responsible for a prolonged or we can say persistent vasodilatation so on temporary basis histamine causes vaso constriction anyhow on persistent basis this is responsible for the vasodilatation so if there is a severe vasodilatation phenomena what will happen we will say that there will be a decrease when it's return toward the heart system if there is a decrease when it's return toward the heart system so ultimate effect will be on our uh, diastolic blood pressure or on our uh, we can say blood pressure simply so this will cause decrease the venous return toward heart overload on heart will obviously this this have a direct effect on the heart Uh, the functional capability of the heart while on other side we can say that there will be uh, a oozing phenomena the liquid portion will ooze out uh, from the uh, from the normal systemic circulation toward the uh, interstitial spaces and there will be a edematous like condition will be reported this is also this is to be keep in mind while on other side histamine which are secreted from the are released from the mouth cell have a direct effect on the uh, bronchial smooth muscles uh, this have a direct effect on the bronchial tree and responsible for the vaso constriction responsible for the bronco constriction bronco bronchial constriction so histamine on one side cause vasodilatation dilatation 
in edematous condition and decreased blood pressure while another side it caused the bronchoconstriction so simply we can say that uh, just by focusing on the two major vital organ systems so histamine cause have histamine have a direct effect on the blood pressure and in a decrease the blood pressure severe decrease or severe fall in the blood pressure there. and on other side there will be also a decrease uh, pumping ability of the heart wall or organ system so obviously there will, there will be a decrease pumping ability of heart so obviously decrease blood flow to our heart so, so obviously the heart will try just to compensate the problem and obviously so various pathways even that is the re-injecting scene mechanism all these pathways will be initiated in our system and this or the auric uh, effect on the body system so that's simply by decreasing the blood pressure and also by causing the vaso the bronchoconstriction so obviously we can say that the blood pressure is affected and other side the respiratory mechanism is also affected so that's why this may be the leading cause for the death of a person so if someone uh, show in a phylactic reaction or severe hepatic reaction to a specific previous dose of the vaccine so the coming doses of the respective vaccine should be avoided and to be contraindicated especially in that uh, person anyhow sometime some person show basically a um, allergic response to certain vaccine component so this is also a condition where we should have to avoid the, those specific vaccine so the next the next thing is this if a person is sometime if some person show a uh, response allergic response to some component or to a work to a vaccine component so obviously that vaccine should be uh, uh, avoided the next which is too much important especially and that is related to the diphtheria pertussis and tetanus and we know that most probably there are three doses of this uh, vaccine and these three doses should be administered with a specific interval that is the dpt1 uh, dpt2 and dpt3 is these are the too much important doses and it's imp- it's important that if someone show like especially i, I mean the children if a child show a reaction and that is the convulsion type reaction toward the first dose of the dpt if there is a convulsion related to the, the dpt1 so the coming two doses should be avoided in that in that persons this is too much important especially in case of children the next one if the child is immunosuppressed one uh, especially related to a certain disease like the malignant disease like aids because in case of aids the hiv virus attack on the uh, immune system the cd4 helper t cell especially which is, which is the precursor element for the uh, antibody production and whatsoever the coming series of the uh, uh, to the immune system so that's why in case of those candidate uh, if, if somewhere uh, if someone is suffering from immunosuppressed disease if someone is suffering from the aid condition so the bcg vaccine should be uh, avoided this is uh, too much important in case of some children if they have uh, they are suffering from severe dehydration condition in that condition the vaccination program should be as uh, respect to vaccine should be uh, avoided or to be stopped for a temporary basis the next step is too much important so Uh, if someone is suffering from a problem and should have the increased blood uh, increased body temperature this uh, 38 or elevated body temperature is there so in that circumstances we should have to uh, we should have to avoid it the respective vaccine or uh, the schedule of the vaccine should be stopped so from this is clear that if there is in a phylactic reaction Uh, due to the any previous dose of the vaccine or any 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 antigenic substances they, they cause the anaphylactic reaction some condition which have a direct effect on the blood pressure and the respiratory system and so many other respective series of the organ so in those circumstances we should have to avoid the vaccination program on a temporary basis yes and in some cases if there is a respective allergenic response to some comp- vaccine components we should have to stop and if there is a convulsion phenomenon to the 
first dose of the DPTA, so the coming two doses should be avoided. And BCG, which is one of the starting uh, vaccine in case of children, so if they are you know suppressed, suffering from AIDS, so yes, this vaccine should be avoided. And if a child has, if child is suffering from severe dehydration, in the same side the child is also suffering from elevated body temperature. So in these circumstances, I think we should have to avoid the program that is the immunization program or certain respective uh, vaccine of the respective uh, schedule. Where certain conditions are there, uh, where the where the EPI yes, the vaccine should be uh, recommended. The vaccine should be not properly contraindicated. Where the vaccines are to not to be not to be contraindicated. Yes, we should have to uh, we should have to follow the EPI program if those conditions are there. So the first condition. If someone is suffering from general allergenic response, if there is general minor allergy or if there is asthma, so if someone is suffering from asthmatic condition, if the reason of the asthma is clear, so I think if the, if the person is asthmatic or if there is minor uh, allergenic response, if there is no minor asthmatic response, so the API program should be followed. Schedule of the API program in case of children should be followed. Uh, and especially if there is minor respiratory problem. So in the previous like in case of an epileptic because severe bronchospasm is there. So if there is minor respiratory problem, minor upper or lower respiratory problem, so the respective vaccination schedule should be followed the API program should be uh, followed. So it doesn't mean that there is a minor respiratory problem or minor allergen, allergenic re response or minor asthma and just we will focus we, 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 and we, to, we want just to contraindicate. We don't have to contraindicate it. Yes, if there is minor is allergenic response, asthma. Yes, if there is a minor respiratory problem, so the program should be continued. <coughs> If there is a minor diarrhea like condition, so in the pre previous condition where if a person is suffering from severe dehydration, severe dehydration like severe vomiting is there, remiss is there, uh, and a lot of problems are there. This is a, this is just like a syndrome type condition. So due to some a lot of problem, listed problems, if a person is severe dehydrated, so we have to contraindicate. But if there is a minor diarrhea. So the, the EPI program should be continued. The respective vaccine should be uh, used and should be uh, continued even whatsoever the dose of the vaccine. It should be administered. The next one is too much important. Family history of some adverse reaction. So if there is a minor family history regarding so it doesn't mean we have to stop all the EPI vaccine. So if there is a minor history of the problem, then yes, we should have to uh, recommend the vaccination program. Uh, another which is too much important, that if there is a family history of the conversion. So if there is a family history of the conversion or seizure like condition, so we should have to continue. Where in previous case, mostly if convulsion is reported with the first dose of the TPT, then we have to stop. Anyhow, if there is general convulsion or seizure like condition or his family history of the convulsion, so it doesn't mean that we have to stop. So, if there is a convulsion, general family history of the convulsion, the normal schedule of the PI should be continued. Anyhow, in case a convulsion related to the first dose of the DPT, then we have to contraindicate it. But in a general family history, then we have to continue. If someone is suffering from uh, suspected HIV infection, it means that there is no clear 
sign symptom of DRC. So if there is no clear sign symptom, there is, there is a possibility that the person may be suffering from HIV infection. So the vaccination program is not conducted. But if someone is suffering from AIDS, you need there, if there is clear sign symptom of the disease, then we have to stop the vaccine like BCG. But if there is, if the person is, if the person have susceptibility of the HIV in that condition, but there is no clear sign symptom of the AIDS, then we have to uh, continue the vaccine. We have to recommend the vaccine. The next one which is too much important, especially if the body temperature is not too much elevated. So in, in case of contraindicated women, if the body temperature is too much elevated, so that is 38 plus above 38 plus 38.5 plus. So in that, but if it's the temperature is less than 38 point something, so in that normal condition, we can uh, recommend uh, the vaccination program. In case of child bearing breast feet, so obviously you have to continue. Uh, if someone is suffering from chronic illness, like disease of the heart, lungs, or so many other, then if someone is suffering from the vital organ disease, so in that condition we have to continue. It doesn't mean that we have just to control, to avoid the, uh, the vaccination program. Yes, if there is some neurological problem, so also in that condition we have to uh, continue the vaccination program, which is too much important. So from this, what is it's clear? It is clear that certain conditions are there where we have to avoid the EPI program or the respective vaccine we have to avoid. Anyhow, there are certain conditions where if those minor conditions are there, so the presence of those minor conditions doesn't mean that we have to uh, stop or we have to avoid the vaccination program. So dear student, I think you have learned something today. So the basic summary of the today lecture, the basic summary of the today lecture is that today we discuss about the EPI program. This program basically related to the immunization. And this program was launched or established in the early or you can say this was established in 1974. The main objective was just to vaccinate or immunize children or the newborn babies against various variant, variant lethal uh, communicable diseases which are lethal for the newborn babies and children especially. Initially some those some we mentioned those specific diseases anyhow later on with the passage of time some other diseases may be included as we already mentioned even we mentioned that at present time uh, certain vaccines related to some new emerging condition even the coronavirus vaccine should be included. So the main objective was just to decrease morbidity and mortality rate throughout the world regarding the children. To decrease death rate, to decrease disability regarding children in our society. So this program was not only for a specific region, for a specific country, this program was for the entire universe. This was for the entire system to eradicate all the listed problem from the entire universe. Anyhow, the too much important thing we mentioned that especially in the Asian society, still the polio malatus cases are reported. That's why still we have to vaccinate our newborn babies and children to, in order to eradicate this problem from our society. The next which we mentioned that certain major strategies to be very important and the strategies basically that is to to vaccinate all the people throughout the entire universe 
and especially we have to free the globe from the polio and the next one yes we should have to free uh, we should have to eliminate measles and the new natal tetanus especially this was also one of the, the main strategies and then we mentioned the importance so obviously the importance that we have to vaccinate so we will modulate the, the immune system so we will produce the antibody and yes a response will be there we will protect the people individual the children against those pathogenic diseases yes if we protect the newborn baby the children even the young especially if the, it is to be needed they should be vaccinated so we will increase the lifespan of the people by promoting the health and yes we have to 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 protect our children from the disease condition and especially the newborn babies and uh, the next one which we mentioned that certain conditions to be there where we should have to contraindicate it uh, the respective vaccine even where the api program is to be contraindicated even some uh, part of the api is to be contraindicated some vaccine of the api is to be contraindicated so we mentioned that if there is an anaphylactic reaction if a person show an anaphylactic reaction towards some doses previous doses so obviously in that circumstances we have to avoid because the anaphylactic reaction is too much severe condition if there is a allergenic response to some vaccine yes we have to avoid if a person show convulsion reaction to the first doses so obviously the coming two doses should be avoided same if someone have the problem recurring the bcg due to the immunosuppress situation so obviously we avoid if there is severe dehydration and elevated body temperature we again we have to contraindicate or we have to avoid the vaccination program anyhow some minor problems are there where we should have to continue with respect to so minor allergenic response minor asthmatic condition to so yes we should have to continue and the next one minor respiratory again we have to continue minor the, the in the country indication there was a severe they are here minor dehydrate to again we have to continue minor by temperature elevated by temperature if someone have again a history family history of the convulsion so why not to to continue the but in that circumstances that was the convulsion related to the dpt1 and if there is a severe chronic kidneys or even neurological problems so again we should have to continue so dear student i think you have learned a lot today and uh, the remaining we will discuss inshallah in the coming lecture thank you